if you're just starting to learn to program right now, you're doing it during the, one of the biggest shifts in the program in history. AI is not just changing the way we code, it's also changing the way we learn to code. And when I see people learning to program right now, they are falling into one of the two extremes. They're either relying way too heavily on AI or they're trying to avoid the AI altogether. But does it really make sense? What is the most efficient way to learn to code in 2025? And what does it even mean to learn to code in the age of AI? Hi, my name is Elena. I am a software engineer with almost 10 years of experience in the industry. And on this channel, I'm trying to make programming make sense, both by sharing my learnings for other fellow developers and by translating programming concepts into something understandable for everybody else. So what is happening with how we learn to code? It used to be pretty straightforward. You follow the course, or you go to university, you learn some theory, you read the tutorials, you build some applications, you grind lit code, and you get a job. It wasn't easy. To be fair, it was never easy, but at least it was understandable. You know, it wasn't unheard of. Nowadays, the only thing that we can be almost sure about is that AI is here to stay. But how does it change the industry? How does it affect the way we do our daily jobs? We cannot really say it yet because we are in the very beginning of what is happening to be the most transformative revolution in the IT industry. And here we were thinking that containers were it. It's kind of difficult for experienced engineers to shift the way we approach our work and I cannot even imagine how difficult it is to learn to program in the current environment. So here's the problem. On one end of the spectrum, we have people who rely way too much on AI. They are essentially learning to become a prompt engineer. They are giving the request to AI and then they copy the code or they just use what AI has generated for them without even properly reading it. And they think that they learned a concept. But the problem with that approach is that you never learn to write the code that you can easily maintain. You don't learn to spot the bugs in your own code. You don't learn to understand why one solution is better than the other or to see the big picture or one of the most important skills for a developer to take responsibility for your own decision. But on the other hand, people who don't use AI to learn how to code are probably in the same position as people who didn't use internet for their studying when the internet became a thing. So people who don't use AI to learn are falling behind in a way, partially because they're not learning as fast as they could or as efficient as they could, and partially because using AI in daily work is becoming an essential skill. And if you don't learn it while you're learning to code, you will have to change your whole paradigm of working again once you're ready for some real work. And granted, learning how to work with AI is way easier than learning how to code, but why would you make your life more difficult? Before we begin, let me know some of the strategies that you are using to learn with AI, because as any developer, I'm also constantly learning new technologies, new approaches, new JavaScript frameworks, you know, so I would appreciate some tips as well. Let's see how AI can enhance your learning and give you these tools that you can use both for learning and for your future work. I've outlined seven strategies for you to apply, but keep in mind that this is the very, very beginning of our understanding of AI. Moreover, this is my personal opinion, so probably not all of them will work for you. Maybe not all of them will work for me, but feel free to use the chapters in the description to navigate to the points that are interesting for you. Strategy number one, flip the script and make AI ask you questions. We tend to forget that AI is not a search engine and while it can give you answers to your question, the real power of AI is that it can participate in a dialogue. So you can use one of the most powerful learning strategies is to recall what you already know. When you're learning something new, ask AI to quiz you, to ask you questions and to criticize your answers. You have to include it specifically in the prompt because by default it's not going to do it, but this is one of the most efficient ways to learn. Actually, to learn anything, not just the code. Okay, but what if you don't know anything to be quizzed on and you need to know the answer first. Then we have the second strategy. Ask AI to write no 
code. You have to include it in every prompt or in some kind of rules file if your AI tool of choice has it, because AI will forget and it will hallucinate and it will give you the code. One of the prompts that you can include in your question is, do not write code. Explain concepts to me with maximum one, two lines of code examples. This way you will not get a working code, you will just get the concept explained and you will have to think through the whole implementation altogether. Because basically learning to code consists of two parts, knowing what to write and where to write it. And while learning what to write is something that you have to learn by looking at the examples, where to put it is a journey. You need to learn to write your own implementation based on the facts that you got from AI and then you apply strategy number three. Let AI criticize your code. Instead of taking the code from AI, you're giving your own code to AI so it can learn from your beginner's code so I can keep my jobs for the upcoming decades. Give your code to AI and ask questions. What can be improved? What do you think of this code? What are the best practices and which one I didn't follow? Please be critical about it. And the last line is kind of important because otherwise AI will be very soft with you and this is not what you need at the moment. Actually, I did not include it in the strategies, but it can be quite hurtful to be criticized by a person because especially in the beginning, you're kind of sensitive about your value as a developer, but AI is not a person and being criticized by AI does not really hurt your feelings, at least it shouldn't, so use that. Okay, but what if you ask AI some questions, you wrote your code, AI says the code is good but it doesn't work, what do you do? Well, AI does hallucinate, so strategy number four is to cross-reference your sources. If you see something suspicious or you're learning a completely new technology, it might be nice to open a real documentation of that technology and make sure that AI is giving you the right version. It's giving you the right combination of your tools. For example, if you're using React and TypeScript, you probably don't want an Angular example. Make sure AI is covering your basics and keep in mind that the examples of the code may need to be verified. Okay, but that is so much information. There are so many things to check and verify. And how do you even go about it? Well, you apply strategy number five. You focus on one thing at a time. In fact, I call this strategy set your learning focus because this is basically what you do. Like you set some parameters in the app settings. You set this in your AI dialogue. You say, explain this concept to me, but I'm focusing on readability or I'm focusing on making the most performant code possible, or I'm focusing on learning best strategies and I don't really care about performance right now. First of all, it prevents this information overload of a lot of things that AI will <laughs> give you. And second, it also helps you to learn how to find the trade-offs between things. So if you're focusing on performance, AI will give you some results that are very performant, but you already know that the readability is not going to be that great. You can even include that in your prompt. Today I'm learning how to write a low latency code, which is a code that works really fast. Please highlight where we are sacrificing other aspects of the code to achieve that performance. Bonus points, if you ask the same question but you change the focus, then you can clearly see the differences between the two options. Probably as a beginner you won't know all of the possible things you can see in the code. So you have to apply the next strategy to get the full big picture. And this is strategy number six. Ask what else? Don't forget that AI nowadays is an LLM. So it's basically giving you the most common, the most adequate in its mind solution. It's not giving you the best one for your goals. So always ask, what are the trade-offs? What are the alternatives? What else do I keep in mind? What are the consequences of my choice? And this is one of the best things you can get from AI. The big picture where the details are not that important, but you get to know all of the things that you cannot search on your own. Just 
because you don't know what to search for yet. And also you're building this decision-making muscle and the trade-off tolerance. And trust me, you'll need that. And one of the most important things that you can do with AI is strategy number seven. Use AI as your roadmap. AI is not a search engine. It's not your friend. It's not an all-knowing guru. It is a guide to the world of software. How should I start learning technology X? What is the logical next step? What are the common mistakes? What are the things I should be aware of? Having this kind of guide really helps you to not get stuck or to not plateau in your learning. And this is one of the most important thing for your motivation. And being motivated is the most efficient way to learn to code in 2025 or otherwise. People tend to think that AI will make our lives easier or take our jobs. But in reality, it just requires a different kind of discipline Think about the previous occasions when social media was introduced or we all started staring at our phones 24 seven or when the internet was created. They did make our lives easier, but they also added a new level of complexity, a new level of self-constraint necessary to actually do something in the age of social media and phones and distractions. And now we got AI, but you know what? The society as a whole did not become stupid when Instagram was created. So I think there is hope for us with AI, but I do think that we need to be smart about it. But do you think we're doomed? Leave your opinion in the comments and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos about coding in the age of AI. And I'll see you in the next one.